Hello, this is William from QED, and today I'm making a short video to try to summarize in a few minutes some of the work that we have been doing as a technology partner for the Kenya implementation of the CHAMPS project. CHAMPS stands for Child Health and Mortality Prevention and Surveillance. It seeks to understand the underlying reasons behind a epidemic in the global south in which six million children under the age of five are dying each year, 83% uh, of which reside in sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia. So we have been very grateful to be working with the uh, wonderful people at KEMRI, Kenya Mortality Research Institute, as well as uh, JOORTH, CDC, Task Force, and many other collaborators on this project to help implement the Kenya version of the CHAMP site. Um, so we made this web page here, and the URL, as you can see on the screen, is qed.ai slash champs. You can also find it on our website. And um, we just wanted to put in one place all the different applications and data processing pipelines that we've been building to make it both easier for our partners to understand where all the apps are, and also to help external parties better understand what we do. The web page begins by summarizing again the CHAMPS project and enumerating some of our collaborators that we've been very happy to work with. And this is a picture of some of the folks that were at the launch um, last year. And then it goes through an explanation of what the CHAMPS data processing workflow is about. In short, there's uh, a death in certain eligible catchment areas. When that happens, the community health volunteer calls the mortality surveillance team on the phone. Mortality surveillance team records some basic data, decides if the case might be eligible, sends some people out into the field to interview the parents or guardians to make sure that they can get consent and eligibility. And if so, uh, the, the child is enrolled in CHAMPS and or KMS, uh, KMS standing for the Kenya Mortality Study, which is a, another study that is trying to understand the causes of high mortality rates, but they do it in a slightly different way, and it was ongoing before CHAMPS arrived. So as you can see, there are specimen collection processes, barcoding and labeling processes, data entry, and data entry processes all along the way, and there are many different kinds of studies that are performed on these patients, such as uh, minimally invasive tissue sampling, PCR, HIV, tuberculosis, and malaria tests, and many more. And there is a business logic um, or business process model that describes how all of these samples must flow between different parts of the lab. So what we do is build a customized data processing pipeline to help support the CHAMPS and KMS projects concurrently and also to allow local staff to retain their knowledge of open data kit based systems. So this diagram tries to summarize the workflow. First, we have RedCat dictionaries that are hosted by the PO uh, on a lab key site. And those RedCat dictionaries get sent to an app that we built called Rosetta Form which translates those dictionaries into another format called XLS form. And this is an Excel spreadsheet that can encode any ODK or Open Data Kit based um, form. So afterwards, these XLS forms are sent to some analysts and developers that work with the data liaisons to make some modifications to these forms so that they can juggle both CHAMPS and KMS at the same time and maybe also incorporate some local modifications necessary at the Kenya site. These XLS forms are then stored in the repository and we use the same kinds of repositories that um, our software developers use for this, such as Git and Jarrett for code review. If I click on this link, we can also see that we've mirrored all of those forms publicly online uh, through this spreadsheet of links. So for example, if I want to see the implementation of the 1.1b eligibility screening and consent tracking form, I can click on it. And I have all the code uh, listed here as a read-only spreadsheet, which you can also download and use yourself. Okay, So I won't get into all the details of this, but uh, it's just a 
simple and nice format for describing a form. So all of that is kept online and we push these forms to a test server first where the data liaisons as well as some in-house QA testers at QED will test the forms on the test server. If we're all happy with it, we will then periodically sync those forms with the production server. And the production server is what most of the clinicians and, and data entry technologists work with. They're not even aware usually of the test server. In the remainder of the site, we go through some screenshots of what these things look like. So here you can see Google Toolbox in action. It, it supports both mobile and web-based input. You have a lot of nice widgets and the skip logic is all implemented there. And you can go back, edit the form if there's an error and the editing interface looks exactly the same as the original input interface. This is the progress application that I was mentioning. The main view that people usually see is something like this. So here you've got different patients. Here you have the forms. Gray boxes are tests that are not required based on the CHAMPS algorithms, whereas white boxes are required. And a check indicates that that submission was completed. We also have encoded the deadlines that have been supplied to us by the Chemry site, so we know whether or not each test satisfied its deadline relative to the time the patient entered the system. And we mark in red those things which are overdue. And then there's a status check. The status is green check mark if all the required tests were done. So all that business logic in the CHAMPS diagram can be encoded using this backend interface where we say what are the logical conditions under which certain sets of forms are required. So this is just a, a way, a language for writing down uh, formally all of the algorithms and if statements, business logic that is encoded in the original business process model for champs. Over here, we see some screenshots of the automated dashboards. These are all dashboards that were suggested by the staff at Chemry. We did not create them. They thought this up. And we just helped implement it. Uh, so here you can see notification enrollment breakdown, unique deaths reported. How does that break down? How do the death notifications break down by community, by health facility, and so on? And uh, we have these statistics, and there are also more statistics based on the results framework indicators, all being automatically computed. This is a screenshot of the restricted access data portal that we've built. So users who log in and have um, secure access will see something like this. And then if they click on one of those folders, this is what they will see in the champs folder, for example, then KMS and decode will show something else. So that summarizes my quick talk about the data processing pipelines that we've been building for champs over the past couple of years. This has involved major efforts from about a dozen different developers in my company. And we really enjoyed working on this. In fact, we think it's one of the most meaningful projects that QED has ever worked on. We would gladly welcome any future opportunities to build similar kinds of creative data processing analytics and pipelines in the future. Thank you.